Hello, Eric. Good afternoon, and uh, welcome to Craig's Technology Corner, where we discuss all things technology and how it's transforming uh, the world around us. Um, it's my absolute pleasure to have you here today, uh, Eric, with us. You are the Vice President of Business Infrastructure Solutions for Synoptec and also a well-known former CIO. Eric has over 25 years of information technology and integration experience. He provides strategic management, operational maturity, and service development with a special focus on enterprise infrastructure and cloud technologies. Um, you are an absolute thought leader in this space, Eric, in the technology industry, and I'm really, really excited to have you today on my call here. So, Eric, how are you doing? How are things at Synoptec? And uh, why don't you bring us up to speed? Sure. Well, first and foremost, thanks uh, for having me on your program. It's a, a great opportunity to just to one, you know, catch up again, but, you know, talk about some of the things that are relevant in the space right now. So looking forward to that. Uh, but things at Synoptic are going very well. Uh, you know, uh, we're expecting major growth in uh, kind of our cloud uh, practices and, and some other key areas. So I think it's uh, extremely relevant to the conversation we're going to have here. Awesome. Well, let's jump right into it. So, you know, there's a lot of discussion around cloud today. You know, there are a certain percentage of companies that have, have, have fully migrated to the cloud. There's a percentage of companies that are on-premise and maybe have partially migrated. And there are some that really are really skeptical and still not 100% sure what, what's the right decision for them. So if you think about the universe of potential companies that could be, you know, cloud-based when it comes to their workloads, et cetera, what percentage do you think today, uh, you know, of the SMBs and enterprises that are in the cloud and where do you see the upside? Uh, well, you know, you'd probably be shocked to find out that about 87% of the companies are in the cloud in one form or another. So uh, a lot of times people, when they think of the cloud, it, it could be uh, a public cloud or a private cloud type of situation uh, that are out there. But the fact of the matter is that with the pervasive nature of SaaS and the, the other uh, PaaS platforms that are out there, people are consuming upwards of 30 plus cloud services a day, you know, in their normal workflow life. So it could be uh, exactly like right now with Zoom, it could be Teams, it could, you know, be your two-factor authentication that you're leveraging even for your bank, right? So uh, cloud services are totally uh, integrated with our life now. And, you know, so it's uh, more of just the strategic direction that companies are taking uh, to expand their product offerings or services and what have you uh, out there. Uh, so it's, it's pretty interesting to just see how that's uh, kind of playing out here in the, the last few years um, I mean, to the point of, you know, the the revenues that were being generated in the cloud space, even just four years ago, were only about $175 billion, and it's already increased and expected to hit, you know, $331 billion in 2022. So the growth is astronomical as we're going through and seeing how we impact these in our daily lives. That's amazing. And when you, when you think about an organization uh, migrating their workloads to the cloud, what, what are some of the benefits that, that these companies are obtaining by doing so? And what are the risks and, and how would they mitigate some of those risks? Sure. Uh, yeah. And it's kind of interesting because as you kind of peel apart the market segments, so, you know, enterprise and mid-sized companies, they're really looking for uh, speed and flexibility in their computing platforms and whatnot, whereas small businesses are looking more for business continuity. So something that they couldn't really afford in the old days of on-prem infrastructure because it was cost prohibitive to be able to uh, kind of employ those kind of technologies. So the, the good candidates, you know, for those things uh, moving over, certainly the basics, you know, email systems, just moving those over, uh, you know, no longer do you have to maintain an exchange server or some other thing like that on-prem. So now you've offloaded the, the expenses of your on-prem hosting, your hardware, you know, all the, the pieces that are there, even having to make sure it's highly available. You know, the, you've seen the trends moving to kind of the G Suite or the Office 365. Uh, you know, moving to those workloads, you know, empowers productivity and whatnot. So what we're seeing is, I think, was it most companies say that they see about 80% in operational improvements by moving to the cloud in the first six months. Wow. They, and that's, that's significant. Also, for some of the small companies, uh, talking about that exchange kind of scenario, they're seeing 40% in cost savings 
by moving that direction. So there's there's a lot of good plays uh, that these organizations can make. And this is before you even get into the strategic differentiators, right? With uh, having uh, kind of edge availability for some of the different compute services and whatnot, depending on what your company is doing, uh, but just the basics that are there. And then uh, a staggering 90 plus percent people are saying that they see significantly improved security postures by moving to the cloud, uh, which is, is interesting because, you know, in the early days, everybody thought public cloud is insecure and, you know, everybody was worried about those risks that were coming across there. But uh, the, the fact of the matter is that their infrastructure is actually more uh, locked down and, and more secure than what you could do on-prem. And then just a, a risk and a consideration that organizations still need to keep in mind, though, is that you know most cloud providers do have a shared security model. So uh, especially as we're talking like virtualized instances and things like that. So your traditional uh, virtual machine, things like that, as opposed to a SaaS platform, they will secure the infrastructure and those those base level things, but you are still responsible as the the customer and you know the operator of that environment to secure your applications and other workloads. So you still need some of those traditional uh, you know security based products, you know, for uh, security incident event monitoring or some of the other protection measures out there. Got it. Okay, so eighty percent. That's a big number. That's a, it is. That's a, a new number to me. So that's great. So. In the world of cloud, whether it's public, private, hybrid, et cetera, you know, there, there are a bunch of names that you know, keep, mm-hmm. keep surfacing, right? There's Amazon's AWS cloud, there's Microsoft Azure's cloud, there's Google GCP, there's Oracle has their cloud, IBM has a cloud, et cetera. So what has been your experience around um, who partners well and with what mm-hmm. kinds of companies and why? So like, you know, which, which ones of those cloud providers are best for the different either verticals or size of companies? Yeah, and there's certainly gonna be some specialization, especially as you get into like Oracle or IBM cloud, things like that. But in general, in the, in the marketplace, AWS has secured about a third of the market right now. They're about 33% of market share and Azure is uh, close behind with 21%. Uh, Oracle and IBM are actually less than 5% each. Right, uh, so you can kind of see who the market leaders are just based off of you know those percentage gaps. The closest one to Microsoft after that is Google Cloud, but they only have ten percent. So it's kind of interesting, you know, as you look at that ecosystem. Uh, AWS has been extremely popular with, uh, we'll say, kind of the startup community. Um, think of traditional Silicon Valley, you know, doing. Uh, a lot of platform as a service plays now, a uh, lot more flexibility in the types of operating systems or uh, even services that you can consume through there. And then Microsoft is uh, still, they're really uh, well positioned for the integration across the other suites of products that they have. So uh, if you could leverage Azure to implement some workloads that would you know, integrate with Dynamics 365, for example, or even just straight Office 365 and integrating kind of the security models and the feature sets and whatnot that you have out there. So, um, you know, we're seeing a lot of flexibility in that with kind of workforce productivity, as we call it, where uh, helping staff automate workloads, be more efficient and, and do things like that just for the daily life as you're going through. But that's kind of the, the play that a lot of people out there are doing. Uh, for kind of the small to mid-sized companies, since they've taken that path into Office 365, traditionally just for email and collaboration services, it makes it an easy jump for them just to kind of spin up into Azure and keep those things integrated. Got it. Okay. Now, when you think about Oracle or some of these traditional ERP suppliers, right, that are out mm-hmm. there and the installed bases that they have of on-premise ERP systems, you know, as they migrate their technologies to being more of a SaaS solution, you know, to me, it would make sense that those, those customers will migrate with them, right? And then they will try to provide those additional services that you mentioned. Do you, do you see your customers today at Synoptic that are running Oracle or SAP or any of the IBM ERP type solutions migrating, sticking with those, those, those vendors or do you see them, you know, jumping to an Azure or an AWS? We're seeing most of them stick, uh, well, they'll stay with 
Oracle uh, for the SaaS platform as far as you know the ERP solution. They don't necessarily integrate the rest of their workloads into their uh, infrastructure as a service offerings. Now, that's not to say that Oracle doesn't have a good solution there. They have very robust offerings. They actually have some actually some of the most flexible offerings in the in the sense that you can actually get bare metal and do some of the other uh, high-speed networking things and whatnot uh, for interconnectivity, uh, but it's just not as popular. So it hasn't gained as much market share out there. From a PaaS perspective, they are trailing. They don't have as many services available. So the Azures and the AWS definitely have uh, more options and, and flexibility in that space. Uh, but so what we've seen now actually is... Um, there's a different strategy uh, around hybrid cloud or multi-cloud uh, might be some different ways that you've heard of that, but essentially um, creating some sort of uh, aggregation point in a traditional data center where you can have your kind of hosted private cloud workloads that are there, but then integrate with the multiple cloud providers through virtual circuits and other connectivity. So they're essentially on the same network working together and, and tightly integrated. Uh, so those are some of the more forward thinking uh, options that enterprise level, mid-market, that they're pursuing those things. Great, great. Okay, so as we segue into HR, because you know, Auders is a HR executive search firm and talent right. advisory firm, and you think about the hotspots today in terms of career opportunities for those that may be watching uh, this, this video, you know, where do you see uh, the most opportunity? Are they, is it at the enterprise architect level, solutions architect, cloud migration specialist, et cetera? Where, where are you seeing within Synoptic and the industry the, the most demand? Uh, cloud is, is definitely a leader and that can be at various levels, right? That could be at the architect, it could be just a traditional engineer, migration specialist. Uh, now, most companies, I, I, I think the statistic I last saw was about 60% of the job postings that are out there are around cloud in some form or fashion. And that can either be to help refactor traditional applications into platform as a service model or uh, just the care and feeding of those cloud environments. Um, that, that is still one challenge that's out there when you have uh, multiple uh, on-prem and cloud environments is that the, the ease of administration still hasn't been solved yet. So you still need specialists that can kind of hit both sides of that. And, and they can be very different on the way that uh, you support those environments. But um, like we're expecting a hundred percent growth uh, in our cloud practice this year. And so, you know, specifically around the, the sourcing from resources perspective, we are absolutely hiring you know, on the, the cloud space, both from an operational perspective, for, so supporting cloud operations and uh, also the consultancy level. Uh, so bringing those architects uh, to help design uh, the future state environments. Great. And uh, is it hard for a Synoptic to attract talent and find talent? How's that, how's that recruiting going? Yeah, it, it's, it's a big challenge right now. Um, I think that with the, uh, it's kind of interesting with the, with COVID and the effects that have happened there. I think everybody's kind of heard of the great resignation, right? <laughs> but where a lot of uh, employees realize that they have options now because you're not tied to a geography, you know, based off of an office, you can be remote, you can do whatever you want there. And so that's actually created uh, compensation pressures in areas where there traditionally wasn't an issue. So think of uh, Canada, India, uh, or even just some geographic locations in the United States. Um, so now, you know, we have to be more aggressive in our recruiting efforts. We have to be more aggressive in our retainment efforts. Uh, and, and not just like trying to save somebody through a, a last minute counter offer or something like that, but proactively, you know, going through making sure that we have uh, staff development plans, have a, a great working environment and, really trying to maintain the uh, the engagement in a remote situation, right? So no longer can you go into the office and, you know, talk around the water cooler or have fun or do some of those uh, kind of engagement activities. You have to find a way to tie that in remotely. Right. But, but with that being said, you're able to access this global pool of talent now, or at least certainly I know Synoptic has a presence in India and uh, also here in the U.S. So I would imagine that you're, you're accessing resources and 
acquiring talent from you yeah. know, different markets. So we are, uh, but the paradigm has shifted as far as, you know, what people are looking for, how selective they're being with the different positions that are being offered. Uh, so, you know, when to find that top tier talent, uh, you know, it does, uh, it's a very, uh, well, it's almost like a bidding war, right? As you go through and try to find some of these folks, but, um, you know, we still are able to find and, and uh, secure the top talent. So it's good. It's just a little more difficult than it used to be. Great, great. And as, and as Synoptic looks at the market in the next, you know, 12 to 24 months, um, where are you guys focused? You know, where, where are you focused? My understanding is you're running the cloud practice now for the, for the firm. And, you know, where, where are you focused and where, where are you guys headed? Uh, yeah, I mean, as far as a, a staffing perspective, we're we're very uh, geographic. Uh, we're kind of ambivalent to that, you know, where we go or agnostic, I should say, uh, to where we're selecting from. Uh, so it's really we're more concerned about the talent level than we are where they live, uh, because most of our engagements are remote and, and we're dealing with uh, kind of uh, dispersed teams or uh, decentralized teams. So not a big thing there. But um as far as direction, you know, we're, we're really trying to build our cloud practices, uh, or I should say grow, they're already built. Um, but, you know, we're seeing uh, a lot of operational growth uh, globally. So we're staffing that both in India and the United States uh, to be able to kind of cover the whole uh, time shift and uh, be able to help facilitate some of the execution on projects for the off hours. So we're not putting our U S staff into every weekend type of work and off shift work. So we're really caring about the kind of the, the work balance as well to not burn people out. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Hey, look, Eric, thank you very much for your time today. That was uh, extremely informative, learned a lot as always, when I speak with you sure. and uh, I look forward to, to, watching you continue to grow and do great things there at Synoptic and I look forward to keeping in touch. Great. Thanks, Craig. Really appreciate the time. You bet. All right. Take care. All right.